find ourselves at the stadium that played host to Super Bowl 52, the wondrous U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Coming up, we've got a good matchup on tap between the Indianapolis Colts and the Minnesota Vikings. Ken Aduagu now out of his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. And now out comes Minnesota. They start the drive with Cook. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give them 15 yards to start their first drive of the game. Well, there you go. This offense off to a strong start this afternoon. Yeah, with a big run and a first down. That's putting what you practice into play. That's excellent execution to get things started. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. They run it again with Cook. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Working out of the gun, Cousins. Pass incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he let him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now Cousins. He's got his man, T.J. Hackinson. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. A first down and then some. Give him 29 yards. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds him for the first down. On play action, Cousins. Completes it to the fullback, Ham. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll bring up second down. Well, this has certainly been a nice drive with the way they've spread the football around. Here, they even get the fullback involved in the passing game. That's got to cause a lot of consternation on the defensive side. You've got to cover him, too. That makes things really difficult. Again, it's Cousins. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Osborne. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. First down. Here's Cousins. He's got his tight end over the middle, T.J. Hawkinson. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far in the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. Looking to throw again on second down. Cousins. This one brought in by Jefferson. And he's going to be taken down right at the 10-yard line. And how about this first drive? They're being aggressive, slinging it around. Really confident, too, because they're not trying to fool them with running plays, throwing it, and they're being very successful right now. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. On the jet sweep, here comes Jefferson. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Second and 10. Cousins. Buying time to his left. 
Oh, and that'll be incomplete. Oh, and took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. It's been a pretty long opening drive. This will be play number 11 coming up on third down. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. Quiddy Pay getting in there and burying him behind the line. So that sack there, that likely brings out the field goal unit, so they might have to settle for three here on their opening drive. They did some nice things, getting things started there, moving the ball downfield, but taking that sack on third down. It lets the air out of the momentum balloon just a little bit. Joseph's got it. And the Vikings have a 3 nothing lead. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, okay, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like, whew, we only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well. Joseph now to kick this one away. The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Ryan and the Colts getting set here, first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Here's Ryan. He'll find Paris Campbell. That's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 16 yards right off the bat in a first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Oh, good move. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. The 22 more yards there and another first down. I love football lingo and the evolution of it all. Nickel defense makes sense, right? Five, Five defensive DBs. backs. But then you go to six. What are you going to call that? And they call it a Double dime. it. <laughs> a dime, which is just very simple for them. The math doesn't add up. But I know one thing, offenses love to run against dime defenses. Typically, the bigger guys have an advantage against the smaller defensive backs when they're blocking downfield. And we saw that advantage right there. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now for getting well backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and they have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Running straight ahead, Taylor. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? So third down now. They need the 27-yard line for a first. Ryan. This will be taken in by Michael Pittman. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 19. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. From the red zone now, here's Ryan on first down. Had an open man that time, man. They put a little too much heat on it, don't you think, Fargo? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. 
Now it's Ryan. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test him early. But it proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. To throw is Ryan. And that will be incomplete as well. And they got to good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield. But once he got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert. And that last incompletion brings up fourth. And his kick is indeed good, and that will tie us at 3-3. So matching field goals on our opening two drives. Yeah, it feels like two boxers feeling each other out here in the early going of the game, right? Exchanging some jabs, but none of the heavy stuff just yet. Each team with a possession, each team with a field goal as the kick is away. This taken in at the goal line. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side. Maybe a little gas. Yeah, right? a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting off field and giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. He was still looking through his progressions and going through his receiver options. And while he was doing that, the defense got to him quickly in the pocket. And it was a great example of zone coverage. Well executed, well coordinated. All the receivers were covered, and he couldn't evade the rush back in the pocket. Forced out to his left. And he wisely will throw that one away. Well, as we get ready for third down, let's go back and recap here. The sack on the first play of this drive, that threw a wrench in what they were trying to accomplish because they were compelled to throw the ball on second down. A running play was not in the works. And that incompletion set up another passing down here on third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Yeah, it's still early in the game. No sense taking a chance on third down and force someone into traffic. So I like the wise play he made there. Get it to the sideline out of bounds where no one's going to have a chance at it. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. Now a fair catch is called for and taken a few yards across midfield. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Good starting field position for the Colts as they have it first and 10. Just shy of midfield at the 48. Ryan. Flushed out right. Oh, he was hit as he threw it there, and that one winds up incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. They go play action with Ryan. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. That one for Indianapolis, resulting in 15 yards and a fresh set of downs. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. 
And Kevin O'Connell clearly unhappy with that call, and he's thrown that red challenge flag out on the field. of scrimmage the 37 on first and 10. Now it's Ryan. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Now Ryan. That's going to be caught by Allie Cox. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 23. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also moved the sticks. That was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice gain. That one finds Pierce right side. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Second down, another run to Taylor. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. And when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. From the gun on third down, Ryan. And oh, it'll be intercepted. And the Vikings are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. Oh, he faked it with a juke. Now he's got some room. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy set the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. Cousins now to throw on first down. Right side, it's the tight end, Hawkinson. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 3-3, a tight one after one on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football as they've got it with a first and 10. They run the counter with Cook. Oh, what a juke into space. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. On second and a yard, Cousins. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far and brings up third down. That was close to a big play, and just a little bit too far that he was led. He caught it but couldn't stay in bounds, Charles. Yeah, I'm not very good at these sort of things, but I have to believe the farther you are downfield, the less your margin for error in throwing the ball, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. 
Yeah, so they gave it a good effort there. Really tried, just couldn't complete it. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Again, it's Cook. And a good-looking run there as he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18-yard line. 60 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first half. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through them, picking up first downs. On the jet sweep, here comes Jefferson. And despite the fancy footwork we saw, they'll get to him just inside the 15. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. And defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. They'll try to throw now. Cousins. Now he's got it. Touchdown! Jalen Rager, a 14-yard touchdown. And the Vikings have taken the lead. Well executed there offensively. Defense looked a little confused, but he found his receiver, and that would go for six points. And the payoff we just saw there tells us how many times they ran this play in practice over the past few weeks because they executed that flawlessly right here on game day when the situation arose. Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Fields it right around the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. In a close game like this, Charles, those interceptions like they had on the last drive could be costly, but here they've got another opportunity to seize control of this game. And they better take advantage of it because otherwise, if they end up losing by one score, they'll relive this over and over and over until they have another opportunity to wipe it away. And a nice run past the 30-yard line there. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves them with a second and three. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Second down, another run with Taylor. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Four yards, the pickup, first down. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy, let him pick up the first down. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Here's Ryan to throw toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. On second down, it's Taylor. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. 45 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. He had to fight for every yard on that run. Shook himself free of the tackle and kept fighting, even with the rest of the defense closing in on him. That's the kind of effort you'll take every single time. The Colts on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and four. Ryan. Got an open man. That's 
it's Campbell. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Third and four, he did just enough. And I mean just enough to move the chains. And that's all you're looking for, right? Just want to keep the drive moving. You don't need the big play there. Just get to that marker that you described, and he was able to do just that. On first and ten, it's Ryan. Now this will be swung out wide for Taylor. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. Well, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. play fake here's Ryan Campbell making the catch and he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. Could be four down territory even if they don't get this but they need just a few inches here on third throwing again Ryan and that is incomplete. So a couple of first downs on this drive, but it's looking like another empty possession. And those empty possessions are certainly starting to pile up. So the adjustments that teams talk about all the time have to be taking place. They've got to analyze what's breaking down and figure a way to fix it. Try to punch it in with Taylor. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Just a gain of three, but they'll certainly take it as they convert on fourth down. Thought they might throw the football with a little chunk that they had remaining on fourth down, but they ran it. They got it. And the reason they were able to get it done, he ran that play with conviction, didn't he? Understood he would get a little bit of help from his friends up front, but it was really on him to go ahead and make the power move and get it done, and that he did. And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. And now a stoppage. It looks like we have a Colt who was shaken up on that last play. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. The toss here completed to Pittman. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball, and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. From the shotgun, Ryan. He'll drop this down to Taylor. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Nine yards, not quite enough. And they'll be left now with third and one. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL. Being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Ryan will throw again toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. One thing you hope to see out of a rookie tight end is real concentration when the ball's in the air, and I'm not sure that he didn't, but he has to be prepared for people making a play on it when that ball's up for grabs. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. 
Chris, a chip shot, a 20-yarder. And his kick is good. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. The lead cut to just four as they kick it away and turn things over to their D. Take it in at the three. And no chance to get away as they'll get it down at about the 17-yard line. And out now come the Vikings. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. First down, here's the run with Cook. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Here's Cook again. And slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe, up to the 41. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Third down, Dalvin Cook. And it's not going to be enough here. A gain of four, about two feet short of the marker, fourth down. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation, and I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed, but the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. And here's Ryan right now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Fair catch signal for and taken at about the 15-yard line. It'll wind up just a 35-yard punt, no return. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. Now, they're about to come up on drive number four, but so far just two field goals on drives one through three. Wondering if the head coach has talked with his offense coordinator and said, look, let's, let's go ahead and press this a little bit. I'm giving you four downs on just about every occasion to try and get this offense kick-started and have it culminate in touchdowns. You know, maybe something to press it a little bit. This might be the case. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. At well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. And he is going to be stopped up at the line of scrimmage. And we'll have a stoppage as well as we have reached the two-minute warning. On third down, Ryan. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have the first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there that brings up four. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. 
On is the putter, Hawk, as he gets this one away. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it will be Vikings ball, first and ten. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. On first and 10, Cousins. And he'll be brought down by the Colts. Quinny Pay. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. So, Charles, no turnovers yet for this offense, but those sacks now, they're starting to pile up. And one thing usually leads to another because they've got to figure out how the offensive line and everyone else involved in protection can keep their quarterback upright and allow him a chance to throw the ball downfield. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Another try after the first down sack. Cousins, he'll dump this off to Cook. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. Short completion, just four yards. And it's going to be third down and a ways to go here. Third and 14. Going to need a crafty play call here. 14 yards is what they need to try to convert this thing. Third and long for Cousins. To the sideline, he's got the catch, and he kept the feet in bounds. Well done. Able to convert on third and 14. A terrific play call. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down in bounds, toe tapping and drag it to make sure he gets it done. A first down throw for Cousins. And his throw here's incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game. It has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try to pick up another first down. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Throwing his cousins. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. That's not the first time they've gone his way on this drive, and they were obviously keyed into it because they were there to help break that pass up. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Again, it's cousins. He's going to wind up and air it out. And that will be incomplete. And they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit them over the top unsuccessfully. A 55-yard attempt. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. The Colts going to take over now late in this first half. And with good starting field position and three timeouts as well in their pocket, no reason not to try and put a late scoring drive together. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 45. Ryan. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. From the gun, it's Ryan. 
He'll get this one to Pittman. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. down Ryan got a man it's complete to Jelani Woods now another timeout called for by the offense so that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. To throw again is Ryan. Throw left side, take it in by Pittman. Now the Colts will use their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the left hash, it's a 36-yard attempt. And his kick here is good. And that gets him back within a single point. It's now 10-9. to nine. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, he's still been able to come away with points due to his leg. So just eight ticks remaining here in the first half as they'll kick this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. And the Vikings going to take over here one more time before the half. And with five seconds to go, this will likely be our final play. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we've reached halftime here in Minnesota with the Vikings on top. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach, the Colts getting the football first, and they trail here as we are back underway in quarter number three. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. And Charles, some things to like about that first half, ultimately trailing here, but certainly this deficit is manageable. So curious to see what adjustments they may have made at intermission. As am I, because I think things bode well for a possible comeback because I thought a lot of the best reps in the first half came through the passing game. They were hitting the open receivers, taking whatever the coverage gave them and making it work well for themselves. Now, they just want to pick up the pace and score it a little bit. So I expect them to come back, continue to throw the ball effectively. So they'll get nothing out of that play, and it's second down. Give them the completion, no gain, but let's focus in on that tackle. Open field tackling, the hardest thing to do in the game, I believe. But when you get outside the tackle box, it becomes a numbers game. The defense had more than they could block. Meanwhile, Ryan's throw into the hands of Pittman here. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. He continues to deliver a first down here. He had four catches in the first half, and this one number five. From the gun, it's Taylor. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he'll work 
it across midfield inside the 45. 83 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. Dropped at the 35, but he was able to display the agility there. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Now it's Ryan. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there trying to take a shot, but it's third down. But you got to think that sooner or later, they're going to hit one of those. But the coverage has been excellent thus far, and it was again on the last play. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Now Ryan. And he'll find Pittman. And a loose step there. And the Vikings pick up the football. And he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. First and 10, and kind of tipping their hand at running the ball. Three tight ends are out there. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. A tenth carry in the game for Cook. And he'll get about three up close to the 35. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Before seeing completion on first down, then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. And for the Colts, an extra defensive back in there now on third down. Throwing. Cousins. And this is going to be incomplete. So it doesn't look like they're going to be able to build off the turnover. Well, the defense certainly did its part. It got them the football. But you're exactly right. It looks like they're going to have to punt this one away. And it's not a turnover. But doesn't it feel like one after grabbing the momentum with the defensive play? Yeah. And they had all that momentum after getting the football. And now zapped right back in the other direction. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. 39-yard punt, six yards on the return. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively, just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to. How did each play work? Okay, what do, what do we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Now Ryan on first down. And incomplete, he dropped it. Maybe a rookie mistake there, second down. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped, surprising. Was this game announced as a night game prior to, and maybe his rhythm confused, is just off, he's got know. thrown off? He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. Up the middle, here's Taylor. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Five yards, now it's third and five. Not a ton of room available on that one, but he made use of what space was available 
and gain decent yardage. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. Here's Ryan to throw. And that ball incomplete. Took a chance with that one. What a lead in fourth down. But we're into the second half now. This is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. And that ball's going to angle out at the three-yard line of beauty. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got him pinned down deep. And on the first play, they gave up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down. That's what they talk about, Dustin, all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down and six. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed a maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. On third down, Cousins. And he'll just get rid of it. Yeah, that's a nice job there defensively to blanket those receivers on third down. And as a quarterback, all you can do is just loft one toward the bench, not too close, mind you, and live to punt the football. And here's Ryan right now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And a fair catch called for and taken right on the midfield stripe. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And the Colts are set up well as they take over first and 10 on the short side of the field. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. A uh, quick throw knocked away and incomplete. Quarterbacks work all the time on manipulating a defense with their eyes and their head movement. In this case, he just stared the receiver down. That allowed for excellent coverage, able to knock that one away. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Play action. It's Ryan. Now this will be swung out wide for Taylor. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back, and it can turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short gain. Here's Ryan. They'll set up the screen to Taylor. Good contain, no gain on the screen, and they'll bring up fourth down. And I know that one didn't work out the way they thought, but I don't think it was a bad time to call this play. You're thinking on third down, you might possibly see some pressure. You might see a blitz. So they tried to set up the screen, but that one was well read, and they stopped him for no gain. Here's Matt Hawk now as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. That punt was near perfection as it checked up inside the five-yard line. You never know where these things are going to go, do you? No. What was it? You got a John Heisman quote about that. Yeah, right? he said the football is roughly a prolate spheroid, which means it's going to bounce funny, and you never know where it's going to end up. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he'll get what he can up the middle, three yards, and that'll bring up second down. 
Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. On right, second down, it's Cook again. And he'll find some room to get this up to about the 14. 86 yards rushing for him now to this point. It's not a huge breakaway run, but if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. They'll run it. Here's Cook. Oh, he shifts past him. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. It's a gain of eight, and it'll wind up moving the chains. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and ten. They'll try to throw now. Cousins. Oh, going for Jefferson downfield. And this one is incomplete. I like the fact that he took the shot deep downfield. Even if you don't get the catch, maybe you get a defensive penalty and pick up the yardage that way. A third quarter now and a one-point game as they line up second and ten. To throw, Cousins. Steps in trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. DeForest Buckner picks up his second sack of the afternoon. This is a little hard for me to compute because I'm watching sack after sack happen, but somehow they're still behind in the game. I would expect all of this defensive pressure to translate to them taking a lead, and thus far, it hasn't happened. Time's winding down. They don't want to waste this type of performance from these ace pass rushers. Flush to his right. Now on the run, he'll throw it back deep over the middle. He's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down the night before they work this to the 45. Well, that'll help get you out of danger. So much for playing it conservatively back towards your own goal line. That aggressive mentality, sometimes you can use it. And they did there against the defense who probably thought to themselves, there's no way they take a shot here this deep in their own territory. Another tote for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Cook, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. This one's still anybody's ball game. It's a one-point difference here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And yeah, maybe a little over-pursuit there as he's able to take this down to the 25-yard line. Give him 18 there and give the Vikings a first down. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower. That front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. Cousins on first down. And out of bounds right around the 20. The gain of five, and it'll be second down. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. On the jet sweep, here comes Jefferson. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. Well, they gave up a few yards there, but all in all, I think it's a pretty nice job defensively against the jet sweep. If they don't slow him up, he might take it to the house, so they'll take that play every time on the defensive side of the ball. Third down, here's a run by Cook. And he'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. So many things go into making a good play on defense. In this situation, just not being blown out of the way was a big start and then a nice tackle to finish things off.
Needing the tough yards, they run it with their fullback. And he is going to pick up the Vikings first down as they manage to convert. And that will keep the drive alive. A solid pickup of five and a very solid fourth down conversion. And defensively, pure frustration. So this offense able to convert on fourth. And now a fresh set of downs here, first and ten. Now Cousins. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he could break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Well, from the four, this is second down and one. Now Cousins here on the bootleg. And it's caught. Touchdown, Vikings! Kirk Cousins on the connection to Justin Jefferson. And the Vikings go coast to coast and finish the drive off with six points. So an important drive for them there. And they're not home, but momentum, Charles, definitely in their favor now. And I like the point you just made. They're not home yet, but a one-point game, and if you kick the extra point, make it an eight-point game. Only one score. But you're right, momentum definitely in their favor right now. Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Fielded just outside the goal line. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. Still plenty of time here in the fourth quarter. Just a one possession game down eight. They'll be looking for the touchdown and two point conversion. A field goal here on this drive does very little at this stage. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. To the right side, complete to Taylor. Once more the juke. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 15 yards is the pick up there, and the drive starting very nicely. First down. And that's not a play that you see all that often at the start of a drive, but some teams, they don't mind doing it. And that one, well sold by the offensive linemen. They showed the pass, and then they got out into space, able to get some good blocks downfield and allow the play to be successful. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. We're going to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Ryan. Looking for Campbell downfield. It's caught inside the 25. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. We always talk about the guy who paid off the play, don't we? The guy who caught it or ran it. But how about the elements that go into making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field. Pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route well run, and the football right on the money. First and 10, Taylor now. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. To throw is Ryan. 
to the goal line, but it's incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. And this offense on third down today, just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This will be third and six. Now it's Ryan. Got a man, it's Pittman, and he holds it in for the Colts' touchdown. From 13 yards out. And the Colts have a chance to tie things up as they trail by two here in the fourth. So part one of what they needed is done. They get in the end zone. Now you have to imagine we'll see a try for two. And that's what the book says, but defensively, they can't have... And he's going to be sacked. They came after him. He couldn't get away. And this remains a two-point game. The kickoff is away. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. Well, certainly they'd rather have the scenario they had last time. Now, Charles, remember they had the short field. They took it in the end zone. Now this is going to have to be a longer, more sustained drive if they want to get points. Yeah, a little bit more of a quick strike opportunity last time by where they were on the field, and you're exactly right about that. But now, backed up a little bit. What's that old expression? Now look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked up by Zaire Franklin. And the Colts are going to take possession of the football. After the interception, here's Ryan. And he wisely will throw that one away. No sense risking anything there on first down. Even though he's still in the pocket, he had a receiver out to his side, so just put that in a spot where the only people who can make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. Throw over the middle, going to be caught here by Mo Alley Cox. And they're going to get this down to about the 17-yard line here. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. That's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. A quick throw knocked away. It's incomplete. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Ryan will throw again. That's complete to his running back, Taylor. And they're going to be set up now with a ball at the 13-yard line. I know it was a game, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay game. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. And on third down, they said, forget about the sticks. We want six. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This for a fourth quarter lead. And his kick is right there. It's good, and they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. 
So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Take it in at the three. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 27. He'll start by handing it off to Dalvin Cook. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. It'll be a gain of 10 to start the drive out by a few inches. That'll be a first down. Well, definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now. But that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Throwing his Cousins. This one brought in by Jefferson. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. First down, here's Cousins. Over the middle, complete. That's Osborne. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. But it certainly doesn't matter if it's been through the air like on this play or on the ground. I don't know what's going on with this defense. In a sense, they've been AWOL on this drive so far. Three plays, three first downs given up. They've got to find the answers, and they've got to find them quick. Cousins gives way to Cook. And some strong running there as he's down just shy of the 20 on the edge of the red zone. The Charles are trying to protect this lead late. Those are the types of mistakes they could afford to go without. About the last thing you want to give them is help in completing a comeback, which is exactly what that penalty does. So the penalty yards marched off on the face mask. Here's first and 10. Left side, Cook, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Partner, you get about 20 coaches on your payroll, but there's 60,000 of them in the stands. I don't think any of them like that play. And the later we go, it's starting to sound like 100,000 in here. Here's Cousins. He'll dump this off to Cook. The Colts going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Up the middle, it's Cook. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next.
So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This for the lead in the final stages. The kick by Joseph is good. And they have taken the lead here in the final two minutes. Big kick right there to give him the lead in the fourth. But there is still time left for final. Did they score too soon? Post game will tell us, right? Depending on what happens on this drive, that's how we'll analyze it. If the other team scores, they score too soon. If they somehow hold on, they manage the clock exactly right. Taken at about the one. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21 yard line. So now Ryan and the Colts down 20 to 18. A minute 17 remains. Now their lead has evaporated, but they still have a shot on first down. Ryan to throw. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. A nice little screen. They get six on first down. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if your team has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. A little screen pass, backdoored them, and that time worked well for a solid game. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command and make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Throwing now is Ryan. Finding Pittman. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor. And it's a first down. All right, let's just put it on the table real quick here. This is two-minute drill. you got to know they're looking for their number one receiver. Yeah, you think they'd be ready for that? That time, they weren't. First down now, but that clock rolling. Here's Ryan. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. These are the spots this stage of the game where it pays to have speed on the perimeter, doesn't it? It certainly does. And in the second quarter, he may very well run by him. But in this situation, I know as a defender, I'm loosening up a couple of extra steps that allowed him to run with him stride for stride. Now Ryan. Pass complete to Alley Cox. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. And now with four seconds left, we get a timeout call. for all the marbles. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete, but the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. Of course, the game can't end with a defensive penalty, so they'll get one more crack. So now you get an untimed play, which should be the last one, unless it happens again and there's another defensive penalty. Well, this ball game was close throughout. Remember, it was neck and neck at intermission, neck and neck at the end, but a great job to come in here in a tough environment, Charles, and get the victory. Yeah, tough environment indeed. How about all the people we can hear shouting from their seats right below us, partner? They weren't real happy that their team didn't keep the home field. How about how these visitors came in, calm every step of the way, even with all the pressure, and found a way to get out of here with a win.